It's really not that crazy to imagine someone starting their homestead adventure with rabbits. They're the greatest multi-purpose livestock animal ever created. But the question is, why would someone decide to stop raising them? Today I'll tell you about how we got into rabbits and why we decided that morally, ethically, and to maintain our integrity, we just couldn't do it anymore. Rabbits were our gateway into homesteading. While we still lived in the city and chickens were off limits due to our HOA, we were desperate for a little animal husbandry practice. So we found an adorable breed that was gentle and hardy and cute enough to be pets, and the standard Rex just ticked all the boxes. A visit to our friends and our rabbit breeder, Jeannie, secured our starter rabbits for our herd. The star of the bunch was Rex, the most gentle rabbit you'd ever meet. He was the perfect first pet for our family, a stud of a buck who made many, many baby bunnies. The rabbits showed us what they needed, and we sought to steward them well. Few things are as cute as a baby bunny freshly born or just about to open its eyes. And after several successful litters, it was time for us to transition to our new homestead. We sold off the last litter before leaving the city, and Jeannie housed our breeding stock while we went to make a space for them on our seven acres. It was always our plan to continue breeding at the new homestead. Rabbits are efficient, they're easy to care for, and they do so much of the work of kidding and caring for their litters themselves. Pound for pound, they produce the highest protein yield with the lowest feed costs compared to chickens and even cattle. We just didn't know what we didn't know when it came to what makes them vulnerable. This might be where you want to turn away because you envisioned the tragedy that befell our rabbits was predatory. And it was, just not the way you're imagining. A few weeks after settling our rabbits into our new home, a rabbit viewer, Teal Homestead, sent us a message. She asked if we were experiencing any strange symptoms in our herd. Of course not, we replied and looked into her concern. Rabbits were presenting with seizures, bloody nose, lethargy, and bloat. Both domestic and feral rabbits were showing signs of this disease with no conclusive explanation. By this point, we'd successfully grown out and culled over a dozen rabbits on our homestead. Everything was looking great. Our does were easily bred, they kit with ease, and apart from a few typical losses, we were over the moon with just how well our rabbits were thriving here. We converted some of our old cages into tractors to grow out the rabbits and let them live out their days on fresh pasture. From Rex's line, we sold several bucks and does to friends in the area. But then, in early 2020, along with a worldwide pandemic panic, we were hit hard. The issue started one morning with flaky fur. Thinking mites were the root cause, we treated with diatomaceous earth and honestly saw improvement. But then came the bloat and the telltale bleeding from the nostrils. There was no way around it. Our rabbits had contracted RHD and it was spreading. At first, we thought the hutch was the culprit. So we got the rabbits, put them into tractors. We had a doe who was bred successfully kit in the tractor. We weren't expecting it, but nature's amazing and the kits and the doe thrived until they didn't. Within 24 hours, one after another was found dead. The same presentation, the same timeline. We felt like failures. And to be honest, we had failed epically. More so than embarrassment, we were devastated that we were missing something so critical. And in missing it, our animals were truly suffering. Just one rabbit remained, the gentle giant Rex. He was the buck who met you at the front of the hutch for breakfast each morning, more eager for some affection than the greens. He's the one who taught our kids to be tender, attentive, and compassionate. Rex was our pet. And when one morning he sat at the back of his hutch, we feared the worst. His back legs were splayed and immobile. Still alert and welcoming of a good scratch, we acted quickly. We got him into the tractor. We nourished him with moringa and fresh grass. But hour after hour, he continued to decline. His fur was flaking, he grew lethargic, no more eating, then no more drinking, and then he was gone. We had hoped for rabbits someday in the future after Rex, but then we saw it happen again, just not on our property. Our friend's rabbits began to die with the exact same symptoms and reports were coming in from all over our area. So here we are with an empty rabbit hutch, and to be honest, some emotions that are still raw even in making this video. It's said that you can't have livestock without dead stock. We know that's part of this homesteading gig, but we just cannot recklessly commit to raising rabbits again while this risk is lurking. 
Cows and pigs and chickens, these have all proven to be hardier, or at least more robust choices for our property. Do we love rabbits? Absolutely. Would we advocate for them being a starter animal for any budding homesteader? Absolutely. Will we ever raise rabbits here again? Perhaps. Maybe there's another breed that's more resistant to this disease. But until then, this is the story that we have never told. I hope it gives you a wider view of the good, the bad, and the ugly of a true homestead experience.